Good morning, everyone. My name is Nicole Jarvis. I'm so honored to be here with you today. Thank you all for coming. I have to admit that when I was initially approached about participating in TEDxOU, I tried to tell everyone I am not a public speaker. I deliver babies. So please bear with me. <laughs> I am a 40-year-old OBGYN physician here in Norman, Oklahoma. I am also a mother of six-year-old identical twin boys. But what brings me here today, hopefully to deliver a message that many of you will find useful in your own lives, is the fact that in addition to being a 40-year-old OBGYN physician and mother of six-year-old identical twin boys, I also am a patient with young onset Parkinson's disease. Hopefully, from where you're all sitting in your audience seats, you're unable to tell that I am afflicted with this devastating degenerative neurologic condition, which currently is incurable. So how did I get here? About three years ago, I started having some intermittent symptoms, uh, headache, fatigue, dizziness. And at the time, I was working full time, up all night delivering babies and not getting enough sleep. My twins were toddlers. They didn't sleep much. I was under a lot of stress. So in true doctor fashion, I just sort of ignored my symptoms and moved on with my life. A few months later, my twins turned four years old. And for their birthday, we took a big family vacation to Disney World. It was while we were there that I first noticed my right leg was kind of dragging along like a dead fish. And my whole family was way out ahead of me walking the parks and I was lagging behind, just exhausted. When we returned home from that trip, the symptoms continued to worsen. People at work kept saying, Dr. Jarvis, did you hurt your leg? No, I, I hadn't hurt my leg. But again, just kept ignoring things, kept on going. Later that summer, in August, is when I developed a symptom that I couldn't ignore anymore, a tremor in my right thumb. At that point, I had to do something, or else I wouldn't be able to do my job anymore as a surgeon with my hand shaking. So I underwent an extensive medical evaluation, CT scans, MRIs, blood work, lumbar punctures, you name it, I had it. And thankfully, everything that I was terrified I might have wrong was ruled out. I didn't have a stroke, I didn't have an aneurysm, didn't have multiple sclerosis, not a brain tumor. But what did I have? No one could seem to tell me. The doctors kept saying, let's just keep watching it, we'll just watch your symptoms, maybe it's stress, maybe it'll go away. But that just wasn't gonna work for me. So I continued doing my own research, book after book, article after article kept leading me back to the same possible diagnosis and that's when I began to suspect that I might have Parkinson's disease. Since I was a physician I didn't have to go through some of the channels that a lot of patients have to navigate before they get to a specialist with a referral, find out their diagnosis and get started on treatment. I chose my own movement disorder specialist, called him, told him what was going on and he agreed to see me right away. After about an hour, undergoing more history and physical and review of all the records, unfortunately, he did confirm my own suspicion that I had early onset Parkinson's disease. But he spent the next hour explaining this to me, what it was going to mean, and what we were gonna do about it. When I tell this story, a lot of people ask me, well, were you shocked about this diagnosis? Well, of course, I was shocked. I never expected to hear those words in my entire lifetime, much less when I'm 38 years old, working full time, small children at home. I was definitely shocked. But honestly, what I felt that day more than anything was a sense of relief. At least I finally knew what was going on and I could get to work trying to fix it. But what do you do when someone tells you that you have an incurable degenerative neurologic condition that you already know from your own research might leave you unable to do your job within the next 10 years, and in the future might leave you immobile and wheelchair bound. What do you do? Well, the three things that I chose to do next are what led me to my idea for this talk today. Investigating the power of connections and finding a purpose in the face of possible devastation. So the first step after I got my diagnosis was to educate myself about all things Parkinson's. 
I'd gotten a lot of information from my doctor and I knew a lot from my own research. But the next thing I did is the exact thing that I tell my own patients never ever to do, Google. <laughs> so I was on every website, every Parkinson's page I could find, immersing myself, trying to find out what my life was going to be like from here on out. As a physician, I firmly believe that, and I've seen in my own patients, that the patients who are educated and know a lot about their disease are in sort of a driver's seat, and they can help me by communicating their goals, and that helps with their own treatments and can improve their outcomes. I definitely wanted to be in that position of power with my disease, so education was the key. At this time, I'm gonna take just a couple minutes to give you guys some basic education about Parkinson's. Some of you may have never even heard of it until today. Parkinson's disease is a degenerative neurologic condition, a movement disorder, but has many other symptoms. And it affects about one out of 100 people over the age of 60. That's a lot of people, 1% of the people over the age of 60 will have Parkinson's disease in their lifetime. That's second only to Alzheimer's in this disease category. And the degenerative part means that while initially the treatments that we have do work well to control the symptoms, eventually the disease continues to progress and the treatments are no longer effective. About a million people in the United States have Parkinson's, five million people in the world. And there's about 15,000 patients right here in Oklahoma with Parkinson's disease. And about 15 to 20% of us are like me, under the age of 60. So Parkinson's disease is not just a disease of your grandparents, that's a misnomer. There are many symptoms of Parkinson's and it affects each patient differently, making it hard to diagnose and sometimes difficult to manage. But the four cardinal signs are slowness and rigidity, stiffness with movement and tremors, and difficulty with loss of balance. Parkinson's disease can be caused by various factors. We don't know exactly what causes it in each person, but it's thought to be a combination of genetic and environmental causes. And currently, there are treatments to manage symptoms for a period of time, but there is no cure. So back to my story. When I was on all these websites Googling, I of course came across the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research website. And to this day, it's still by far my favorite website to go on. It has the most up-to-date information about Parkinson's, but more importantly, it is the most hopeful, energetic, positive website out there. And one day when I was on this website, I stumbled across an online support group for patients with young onset Parkinson's, like me. The day I joined that group, it was like a light switch turned on. These were people that were just like me. They were parents trying to raise their children while dealing with the symptoms of Parkinson's. They were professionals in the middle of their careers, just like I was. They were people in my own age group. And they were people with hope for finding a cure within our lifetime. And most importantly, they were people willing to do something about finding that cure. I've been lucky to meet a lot of these people in person. Some of them I've only talked to online or on the telephone but all of them I now consider to be good friends. This is a group of people with an unbelievable strength, hope, and purpose. These types of connections can help lead you to a place of acceptance in the face of a challenge and hopefully lead you to a place of action. The second step on my journey with Parkinson's disease involved disclosing my diagnosis to those around me the dreaded to tell or not to tell question. In meeting many patients with Parkinson's, I found out that a lot of them had been keeping this a secret from not only their families, but especially their coworkers, due to a fear and embarrassment associated with a negative stigma and persona of this disease process. But of those people that had kept it a secret and then chose to go ahead and disclose it, most of them told me that this was the best thing they ever did. They wished they had done it sooner it really lifted a weight off of their shoulders. Uh, an emotional burden was gone, and that led to decreased stress, which can improve physical symptoms of Parkinson's. Disclosing might not be right for everyone, but for me, I knew it was the right choice. So I set out to, in a very straightforward way, tell all of the people in my life 
about my situation. And disclosing what was going on with me and owning up to it really gave me a massive instant support system right here around me. So not only did I have my online group, but now I had deeper connections with those people in my everyday life. And this really gave me a feeling of power and confidence over my situation. I'd already explained to my doctor that I wanted to keep working as long as I possibly could. And my treatment is tailored to allow me to do that. And he and I both firmly believe that continuing to do that I job that, the job that I love for as long as I can will help me to fight this disease process. By telling my patients what was going on, I felt like I was in control over my job situation. I could make some necessary adjustments, but didn't have to give up the career that has given me endless hours of enjoyment. I'll have to admit, in the beginning, it was very stressful and I had the temptation to just get in bed, pull the covers up over my head, and try to pretend like it was all going to go away. But by owning up to my situation and disclosing it, I gave myself a support system to help lift me up and give me the strength to fight. And this led me to an overwhelming feeling that I had to do something about this disease. I truly believe that facing one's obstacles head on can lead you to find better solutions faster. So, this idea that I needed to do something about my situation led me to the third step along my journey, which was to find a purpose in the face of my own personal devastation and make my own contribution to finding the cure for Parkinson's. Michael J. Fox has a quote that I found early on, and it's become my favorite quote of all time. He says, the cures we want aren't going to fall from the sky. We have to get ladders and climb up to get them. So I was energized, ready to go. I called the Fox Foundation to see what events they had going on nearby with their Team Fox group, which is the grassroots fundraising branch of the Fox organization. Unfortunately, I was told that there were not any events in Oklahoma or anywhere close by. What? With 1,500 Team Fox members hosting events all across the country and around the world, there was nothing here in Oklahoma? I couldn't believe it. Okay, I could believe it. This is Oklahoma. <laughs> we're a little behind sometimes on some things. but. I wasn't happy about it, and I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I called my mom. I said, you know, I really want to try to host this fundraiser for Team Fox. What do you think? Well, she immediately went into kind of protective mama bear role. You're so busy. You've got your job, the twins, and you've got your own, think about your own health. But that's exactly what I was thinking about, that while I was healthy enough to do something, this was my chance to really make a difference for myself and the other five million people in the world affected with this wretched disease. So my mom was on board, and along with my dear friend Emily, we set a goal of trying to get 50 people together and hope to raise about $10,000. Three months later, we hosted Oklahoma's first Team Fox Winter Gala, and we had over 300 people in attendance, physicians, patients, community leaders, business leaders, and that first year, we were able to raise over $115,000. I was energized even more by this and wanted to raise my fundraising to a higher level. So, a few weeks after that first gala, I started my own foundation, the Nicole Jarvis MD Parkinson's Research Foundation, and put together an outstanding board and set to work to increase donations. And I'm so proud to say that about six weeks ago, we hosted our second annual winter gala, and this time we had almost 500 people present, and we were able to raise over $185,000. A lot of people have asked me, how were you able to do this in such a successful way, raise $300,000 in less than two years in such a small community like Norman, Oklahoma? Well, it's the power of the connections that I've made here locally and across the country and the fact that fundraising for a cure has become a lifeline for me personally. I personally have gone to over 100 business leaders and community leaders trying to spread a message of hope and optimism, but also to explain to people 
the vital importance of funding the cutting edge research that is necessary to find better treatments and ultimately a cure for Parkinson's. I wanted to put a face with Parkinson's in the Midwest, an area that's been largely overlooked. I think that another mantra of Michael J. Fox's, which is our challenges don't define us, our actions do, also led me to a feeling that I wanted to do something right here in Oklahoma. So we donated a portion of our proceeds from our second gala to fund services for patients locally. But even more exciting to me was the fact that we were able to start Oklahoma's first support group for patients with young onset Parkinson's disease. And like I've expressed to you today, my goal with our group is to not only provide resources and education, but also friendship and inspiration and hope for finding a cure within our lifetime. The Michael J. Fox Foundation is a great organization to help me do this because I can look all my donors in the eye and tell them that 89 cents of every dollar that we're donating to them is going straight to fund this cutting edge research. So now that I had all my fundraising up and running and my support group going, I thought I wanted to try to help some of you out there by giving you a message of hope and optimism, but also to tell you that your challenges don't have to define you. Just like Michael says, this disease does not define me. I am still an OBGYN physician. I am still a mother of identical twin boys that are six years old, raising them, trying to do the best that I can be. I happen to be a patient with Parkinson's disease. I never knew how strong I could be until being strong was the only choice I had. The past two years I've spent making connections that have given me the hope, inspiration, and strength to find a purpose in the face of my own challenge. We all face devastations in our lives. Whatever tragedies may come your way, I hope you will remember that connecting with those around you educating yourself, owning your situation, and contributing to finding the solution can lead you to find your own new sense of purpose and peace in whatever life holds for you. Thank you so much for coming today. You guys have a great day and a great weekend.